hello guys uh, welcome back to the channel welcome back to Shay explores daily and today I've got another video I've got another museum for you in London this time it's a London Transport Museum I'm gonna have a look see what's going on inside and yeah if you like it please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe we're on the road to two and a half k subscribers thank you very much let's go and explore so guys uh, as we walk through the museum you're going to see a variety of exhibits in here which talk about london's transport history going back many centuries you'll see things on the tube the buses the taxis and all various kinds of transportation which i'm going to explain in this video very very shortly so to start the video we actually got a section here paying tribute to my cultural background which is the caribbean and as you can see here you can see all the various flags um, of people getting ready to go to the carnival um, on Notting hill carnival day which is normally during sort of august time for historical context if you're wondering why this is here a lot of caribbean people back in the 60s came to the uk to work in the transportation sector many of them obviously you know have lived here had kids and so on but this section here is in dedication to them and their contribution to the to the London transport sector London transportation sector over the last half century or so on this wall behind me you can see stories from the various people of when they came to Britain and what life was like initially in the Caribbean obviously it's very warm so coming to the UK was obviously for some people quite a bit of a culture shock but as you can see here it's got little bits of bits of stories as to how they settled and what life was like back in the sort of the early to mid 1960s here you've got one of the most iconic sites of London, the famous Black Cab, basically. These have been around forever. And although they've changed over the years, they are a huge, huge part of London's culture. And the city would not exist without them. Now, very, very cool fun fact. If you actually want to become a London taxi driver and drive one of these, you have to pass a very, very stringent exam where you have to know pretty much every single road of London in and out all the boroughs in and out basically so that's a cool fun fact so guys uh, this wall here is in tribute to the elizabeth line which is london's newest railway now if you're like me and you're kind of old you would you would remember it as the crossrail projects and how long it took but essentially it is an east to west railway going from heathrow and reading in the west to shenfield and abbey, and abbey wood in the east so on here it's asked us to sort of guess the station so that one there seven kings i know straight away that one there is Manor Park, I know that. Ilford is where I grew up. Um, as you walk down the line, this one here is Abbey Wood. Uh, that one is Woolwich. Um, that one is... What's that one? Uh, I don't know actually. Custom House. Oh, Canary Wharf. Canary Wharf. So, behind me, if you're old enough to remember these iconic buses from London, these are known, well, I think they're called Route Masters. I'm not familiar, but they're very iconic for this reason here. So, you actually used to enter the bus from the back and not from the front like now. So, there used to be historically a conductor who used to stand by the back and it was like a hop on and hop off bus service. It was really, really cool. I think these served London for about 40 to 50 years before being withdrawn, I think, at the start of this century, if I'm not mistaken, when I was really young. So these buses, as you can see, very, very iconic. You won't see them anymore, but very, very cool. You're probably wondering, were all buses painted gold? So this bus behind me was only painted gold to celebrate Queen Elizabeth II's Golden Jubilee back in 2002. But apart from that, the buses are always normally red. So as you can see, the doors here, people used to enter through here and either go through the front or upstairs. And right here is where the conductor used to sort of stand. So it was like a hop on hop off bus service. So this one here is a Leyland X2 type uh, motor bus. So this was the first kind of bus of its kind to run in London. And as you can see, slightly different. So when you step on the back, there's no bit covering it basically. It's pretty much all out uh, in the open. So as I mentioned, this bus was the first kind of its type to travel in London. But the main difference is, is the top. There's actually no roof above, basically. So as you can see, uh, you are open and exposed to the elements. So this here is called a Austin Low Loader Taxi. And this was the first of its kind to be introduced to London's roads. Initially, a lot of these taxis were actually made in France. And they made their way to the UK once they became a lot more popular. So, behind me is what you call a trolley bus. So it was a halfway point between a tram and a bus. Now, before buses were 
uh, like petrol and diesel powered. They were one of these, they were powered by electricity. So these used to run obviously on the road and as time went on they were withdrawn and then buses were obviously petrol and diesel powered. But it's actually really, really cool because these are absolutely humongous. And there is a little bit where you can actually see the history of them as well around the side. But my first time seeing one of these actually in person. Now here you can see the conductor's got a stick basically. And the stick goes all the way up to the top. And then that's obviously to make sure that the bus is connected to the wire basically, as you can see there. So here you can see a map of where they used to operate. So obviously you can see the central part of London here. And they went to other areas outside like Upper Clapton, Manor House, Forest Hill, all the way down here. It went as far as East Ham. And then in the West, Shepherds Bush and Hammersmith as well. So it covered quite a large geographical area. So guys, uh, this map here behind me illustrates the population growth of London. Now, as you can see on the map, historically the dark blue area was what was, what was the main areas of residency in London but that's now exploded so on this map it shows that in the 1901 census the population of London was about 4.7 million a hundred years later the population was about 7 million so we've had a 3 million increase in a hundred years since then I think now we're approaching about 10 million so we've had another almost 3 million on top of that in about 20% of the time basically so as you can see this section will show the tube and why the transportation is so important to keep up with the population growth so here's like a replica of one of the first very very first tube trains that were used in the Victorian era now as you can see they're not as flashy as they are now but essentially it was just like this wooden doors that you open pretty much so a cool fact so before all the tube was actually integrated there were separate tube lines chef separate companies that made the line so essentially they were competing in the same areas to sort of make the most money hence why a lot of tube lines run the same tracks so here you've got the history of the central line which was known at that time the central London railway so you can see Shepherds Bush Holland Park Notting Hill Gate Queensway but it was known as Queens Road then Lancaster Gate Marble Arch Bond Street Oxford Circus and so on and so forth here you've got another one of the lines, the Baker Street, all the way to Waterloo Railway, all the way down there, famously known as the Bakerloo Line. This here is one train company, the Central London Railway is, is another company, as they meet here at Oxford Circus, and then you've got other railway companies as well competing for the same sort, pretty much geographical area. So on board is what it would have been like back in the 800s to sit on the tube train, as you can see, like this. I'm gonna take a seat and myself. Passengers. And the passengers as well, exactly. Do you guys do me? I'm like, hi. Hi. my video. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm gonna take a seat here. You know, nothing much has changed in about 200 years. You know, the seats are still rough, but you get the point. So as you can tell, this would have been a Northern Line train, and it still follows the exact same route today. So you've got Camden Town there, and you've got the Bank Branch, and you've got the Leicester, Squ the Leicester Square branch, and then there used to be an old branch down by Highbury and, and Islington. But as you can see, this obviously was is this was a Northern Line train going all the way down to Morden, then back up in the north towards sort of Edgware, High Barnet, and so on and so forth. As you can see, you've got a really really cool bus. Um, really really cool bus it's a replica of a london bus obviously all the families love it so behind me was one of the original trains for the metropolitan railway today known as the metropolitan line so for those of you who've traveled on the line you'll know that a lot of it travels outside of london going into buckinghamshire hertfordshire and so on and so forth these trains were specifically built for that journey and they made the journey from marlebone past baker street up into the Chilton Hills, Amersham, Chesham, and I believe it was all potentially further afield. But if you've ever traveled on the Met Line, you will notice that the trains are tend to be quite bigger and a bit more spacious because typically the line that it runs on, a lot of it is actually quite rural rather than metropolitan. No pun intended, but you get the point. So guys, uh, I'm inside the wagon now. I'm inside the carriage. And as you can see, this is what it was like, basically. You had seats on this side and seats on this side as well. As you can see, seats here, seats here as well. And also so you can see the routes as well in London. So you can see all the stations and so on and so forth. Um, you've got another map here as well of the connections and so on. So very, very interesting. So this here behind me is the steam locomotive that used to pull the train. 
Obviously in those days trains were run by steam. This powerful locomotive was built to essentially pull the train and pull the passengers obviously to their destination. It's quite interesting because I wonder how much, I wonder how heavy this locomotive is, but it looks like an absolute mammoth of a creation, an absolute monster of a creation. So guys, uh, I've come up to the second floor and everything on this floor is dedicated to the 19th century. So anything 19th century based is on this floor, which I'm going to talk about. So here you can see the history of all of London's bridges. So today there's many bridges across London, most famously Tower Bridge, London Bridge and Westminster Bridge and you can see all the various years that they were built the vast majority of them were built in the 19th century as you can see here so as you can see here in the 19th century the River Thames was a massive part of London's trade and economy with Britain having the largest economy in the largest um, empire of the world at that time the Thames was crucial because lots of trade went in and out of London via this route Eventually it was changed and the main shipping ports were changed to Tilbury and Felixstowe. But at this time London was booming with trade going all across the world. At this time as well there was actually less crossing points in London. So the boat like this was the most, one of the most popular ways or the most popular way to cross from one side to the other. So guys as you can see we've got a horse powered tram. Before obviously electric, electricity, petrol and diesel. The main form of, tra form of transportation was obviously horses and as you can see this was a double decker. I wonder how strong the horse had to be to carry all these people. So these operated between 1879 and 1883 basically. This here is called a Shilibir Omnibus from 1829 but it has been kept in some very very good conditions. So London's first official bus route ran from Bank through City Road into Paddington. Now behind me you've got a map of London's mainland train stations. Now historically, we know these as the terminus for different main lines to get you across the country. But these stations were crucial because they connected London to the rest of the country at a lot quicker rate. Especially during the Victorian era, after the invention of the steam engines. This allowed Brits to get from the city to the coast, the coast to the cities and to the ports and vice versa. And was a massive game changer for the economy as well. As you can see, it did come at a cost because lots of poor people unfortunately had their homes and land destroyed. But as you can see, London has around 14 to 15 mainline railway terminis scattered around the city. So before there was cars, there was these things here called chairs. So you could actually pay people to transport you in a chair for short distances in central London. Unfortunately as well, the railways, the mainland railways put a lot of steamboats um, and the, the boat trade out of industry. Because people generally prefer to travel by train. It was much quicker and could carry more people at one time. That is it guys for today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I had so much fun in that museum, I won't lie to you. I've got some very, very cool videos coming soon. Let me know what you want to see. But in the meantime, we are on the road to 2.5K. So, thank you so much for your support. I'll see you on the next video.